Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Uncut Honest Review. I am ADS Play, here to review a game that I recently, I wouldn't say recently, I finished a game a while ago, <laughs> but normally I do these reviews immediately after I finish a game, and uh, I did take my time uh, with this one, because I wanted to let my emotions settle before I actually reviewed the game because this is one of them so ladies and gentlemen I am, I am reviewing SD Gundam Battle Alliance for uh, matter of fact I think it's on all systems I think it's on PS4 uh, PC and Xbox as well but I played it via the Xbox Game Pass it wasn't free but um, I played it via the Xbox Game Pass so SD Gundam Battle Alliance is a game that takes place in the Gundam universe where there's these time breaks and these mishaps throughout the history of uh, of Gundam so you are playing as the commander in some uh, vehicle that travels throughout time trying to fix any changes within history and make sure that the history of Gundam stays the way exactly the way that it is. Uh, you're playing alongside Juno or Miss Juno, and I don't think I have a way to show who she is. Cutscene tips. Let me see. I don't think there's any way I can show who she is. Nope, it's not. At least not without watching some long. Uh, <laughs> and also long, watch some long cutscene but the game basically is you going throughout time going throughout the history of Gundam the entire Gundam franchise and fixing any changes within history that were made by this guy called Mercury and uh, you're basically trying to keep the history of Gundam as is to make sure there's no drastic changes that affects current time so the the game spans throughout the entire history of Gundam. And when I say the entire history, maybe not every Gundam unit from that particular f series, but I'm talking about Gundam Wing, um, Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, G Gundam, uh, Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, Thunderbolt, uh, Stardust Memory, Z, uh, like I said, Gundam Unicorn, the Gundam Unicorn series, F91, you see Gundam Wing, which is the one many of us started with, uh, Gundam X, uh, Seed, Seed Destiny, you name it, it goes throughout the entire history of Gundam, and, you know, Iron Blooded Orphans, as well as some of the SD series of Gundams that uh that we ended up getting so and there's there's even one exclusive one that was made um for the game so the game does span throughout the entirety of gundam and it does a good job covering the history of the gundam franchise so if you weren't familiar with it it does give you a general idea of how things went in the gundam world um so in this game there are different units that again spans throughout the entire Gundam history that have different roles there are all arounders there are sharpshooters and there's infighters so the difference between the two the infighters are basically more so the, the close combat uh, they're like the close combat units the sharpshooters I think is pretty self explanatory they're the ones that uh, focus on attacking with projectiles and from afar and the all arounders are basically good at both and uh, and as you play with them, you get to decide which partners you want. Now, here's the one of the things that kind of confused me about the game is that when you select a partner unit, this does not go towards the main unit that you're using. So let's say, for example, if you have a level 28 uh, main mobile suit that you're using, it doesn't count towards the level of the partner that you're going to be using. 
So if I switch, let's say one of my partners with, let's say, uh, where's Master Asia at? Right here. As a partner, he's level, he's level 47. But when I use him, he's level 28. So they, there's a difference right there, which I kind of wish they would have made this a lot simpler because that way it will be easier to level up the Gundams. And by the way, there's a level up system. And uh, yeah, it does get kind of tedious if you're trying to get up to the higher levels. So it seems like in this game, you have to focus on just the Gundam that you want to use and that's it. Because as you fight, you do get to upgrade your... You, you do get capital after every fight that, that you can use towards upgrading your Gundam. So, and there's uh, different items that you have to pick up that you can increase the cap, you know, to increase their stats and what have you. I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And as you increase their stats, the level the levels goes up, thus making it easier you to play on easier for you to play on certain stages um, that uh, that may seem difficult. Um, also, there's different items that you can pick up as well that can increase your health, your sub weapons, your your ranged weapons, your melee weapons. Depending on the unit that you're using, obviously you're gonna have to make sure you pick the right uh, item form because you don't want to put any ranged weapon uh, part on a unit that's made for close range combat it just wouldn't make any sense uh, another thing about this game which kind of irked me a little bit is that when you play through the game and you beat stages you get blueprints which basically go towards creating the Gundam that they have available uh, from that stage. So, for example, as you see right here, this is Gundam Epion, which a lot of us remember from Gundam Wing. If you notice that he has a, a, a blueprint one, and he has a blueprint two, and I need three blueprint ones of Gundam Epion, and I need four blueprint twos. And oftentimes, the, early on in the game, you can just get the blueprints outright you know quickly it doesn't take multiple tries but as you get later on in the game you have you may have to play this well you will have to play the same stage multiple times in order for a chance for the blueprint to drop and, and emphasize on the word chance and that's kind of where my frustration with the game starts uh well not it starts that's where my main frustration with the game is um you know, I understand they want to make certain things challenging, but the game itself, unless you're going to do the online co-op, which doesn't really change anything besides the fact that you get to use, uh, you know, have human, you know, teammates. It doesn't really lend to any, it doesn't really lead to anything. So the fact that you have to play, play the, the same mission over and over it does get kind of boring and repetitive when all you want to do is just pick up the the blueprints and there's a chance you want to, you don't even get them at the time you're playing them so one thing i will say is that they do allow you to increase the difficulty of the stage or decrease it which doesn't seem to affect the drop rate i don't know if it does or if it doesn't but there's nothing that says that it does or if it doesn't i didn't see any information that told me Let's see, rolls, in fighters, sidestep, restore, parts, all that, difficulty. Okay, there we go. So the, the higher the difficulty, the easier it is for you to get the parts uh, that you need. Expansion parts. It doesn't say blueprints, but it says expansion parts. So I'm assuming with a game like this, it lends itself towards that. Uh... So just to give you guys an example of what the gameplay of this game is like, let's go to one of the missions. Uh, that's pretty. It's pretty solid. You get an idea for the 
type of game that you're in for if you decide you want to play it. So as you can see right here, the game lends itself towards uh, like an open map style of a game. I never know what to call these. A third person uh, RPG, basically. And you go around fighting units Raising your meter, you know, getting items, maneuvering through the map, and uh, trying to get the blueprints basically and trying to beat the bosses of the stage. Now, they do have these orange crates around the map that you have to manually go find, and they're hidden throughout the entire map. So those can contain blueprints as well so you do have to be careful not to pass those up otherwise you can put yourself in a position where you may have to replay the stage again because the bosses don't always drop the uh the blueprints so you basically have to just maneuver around the map to see where the blue where the where those orange boxes are and um and just head there like for example see how it's all the way over there I gotta head that way to get that. Now the crazy thing about it is I don't remember the list of items that pop up on the screen. I don't remember that telling you whether or not you got a blueprint or not. Now I don't know if that's just because I never paid attention to it, but I don't remember that popping up that, hey, you got a blueprint. So it is a guessing game of sorts, but play this real quick for you just to give you an example of what the gameplay is like if you if, if you wonder now you depending on the units that you get you do get uh, oh. yeah depending on the unit that you're using you do get more med kits throughout the uh, on like for that map I think for the sharpshooters you get like five or the in fighters they get four. I think the all arounders they get like four as well, but they go right there. So the the SPA that's your special attack. So if you press either left or right when one of your partners has a maxed out uh special, then they're gonna activate theirs. And in order to use yours, you press left bumper and right bumper at the same time simultaneously. And that's going to activate uh, activate theirs. Now, for certain units, they get mode changes when they activate theirs. Such as Master Gundam right here. He goes into his uh, go into this golden form. I forgot what it was called, so forgive me. But his attacks and all that get more... Get stronger. For your sub weapon, you just press uh, right bumper and your left and right trigger, excuse me. That's your other uh, special attack. Now every character has what they call a roll action, which you hold down uh, left trigger and press triangle, and it's going to do different things for different characters. Um, so for the sharpshooters, it refills all of their sub weapons. I believe for the 
the in fighters it does certain things and the all arounders it does something different. So the main unit that I used was the sharpshooter, so I didn't really know, learn. But hold down, right trigger, and press. Well, Y, if you're using the Xbox controller, and it'll do that roll action. So that's basically what the game looks like. Now, of course, I don't know what blueprint I get. I didn't get no blueprints for that. I don't even think there was any blueprints on there. Now, for this for this game, they kind of set it up kind of weird because you have different missions. You have the break missions. You have the true missions, which basically are... I mean, I can't tell the difference between them. But the breaks are basically like the time breaks. The true missions are you trying to correct history and the chaos missions are just something optional uh it's like a higher difficulty um that gives you a chance to get some more rare parts to upgrade the units to like their final uh uncapped level so it does benefit you to play them whenever they pop up uh the multiplayer let's see right here let's see if there's any anybody there's a few people playing online right here and you notice that a lot of people have their gundams all the way maxed out and things like that they do have dlc units which i never bother to uh get because they it just doesn't interest me like that but overall it is a fun game my only gripe is with the drop chances for the for the blueprints but outside of that, the game is pretty fun. It does do a good job with paying homage to the Gundam series in a fun way, especially if you're playing on on uh, online. Um, but outside of that, if you're not playing online, the game can get kind of boring. The game does uh, get very talkative during the storyline. I mean, very talkative. There was times when the dialogue in the game lasted for like 30 minutes. I kid you not. 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And it's just like you just want to skip it. But another thing and I almost forgot. When this game, like when you play the, through the game, there's going to be times where it seems like the game wants to like end. But then it just keeps going. Now, I don't know if that you just get to the point where it's just boredom. Or if you just really want the game to finish. But it's something. So... If you're interested in a Gundam game, I, I would say this is one worth playing. But just understand what you're getting yourself into as far as like the the blueprint drops and things like that. Because they can get frustrating. Outside of that, the multiplayer is cool. You know, it's okay. But what more can you ask for in a game like this? It pays homage to Gundam. If you're a Gundam fan, you would like it. The average person, I think you would enjoy it too. And um, yeah. So with that being said, thank you guys for tuning in. You know, um, couldn't really say too much about the game. It is what it is. It's it's a fun ride through the history of Gundam. And if you're familiar with it, then I think you would enjoy it as well. So that's my uncut, honest review of SD Gundam Battle Alliance. It's a cool game that pays homage to Gundam. And if you ever feel like you're interested in playing it, Go ahead and give it a try. So with that being said, EDS Play 101, out.